What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Dan here from Random Media Guys, and, and I'm here to do a review of episode three of season four of The Expanse, uh, Subduction. Now, before we start, I want to apologize for being, you know, late on this review. Partly it was due to because I had some personal uh, things going on, including I was in a car accident. Uh, my car had been, uh, you know sandwich between two cars but that's besides the point just let you know that I was dealing with insurance and all that stuff so but now I'm ready I'm good to go and I'm going to give you guys an actual review of this episode so thanks for waiting for this um and I'm sorry life life just hits you sometimes anyway so episode three picks up right after episode uh two Left off, Murtry had, you know, got triggered because the uh, one, uh, one of the Belchers by the name of Coop had said some shit that was like, you know, he basically he was basically hinting that you know, watch your back type of thing, like very, very, very schoolyard, like oh you better watch. But Murtry was straight up like I ain't having this shit, so he so he, he headshots him, and um, everyone's like what the fuck's the fuck. Meanwhile, Holden was over at, and Alex were chilling at the, one of the ruins, trying to figure out what Miller needed him to do, which was pulling out a root. Anyway, but this, in turn, has set off a um, uh, some of the the tech, uh, the 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 proto molecule tech, and um, you know, one of the things it did was to cause a series of lightning bolts to be like things like a couple kilometers apart. And one of them happened to hit right by the uh, the Belter's uh, power generator, and all goes black. And um, basically, holds like, "What the fuck's going on?" He calls up Amos, like, "Hey, what's going on?" He's like, "Yeah, like some sh like this shit happened." Also, uh, Murtry shot a dude. Uh, shot a dude. He's like, he's "Like, oh shit!" Like, I keep me. He went, uh, my favorite line. <laughs> one of my favorite lines of the episode was like. He's like, okay, you want me to shoot Morty? And my first thought was like, well, if you shoot Morty, Rick, Rick can just jump from different universes. I'm like, I'm wondering if this was kind of a nod to uh, Rick and Morty, but, but no, this is kind of the running joke of Amos mispronouncing Mercury's name on purpose. So, um, they, like, Holden comes back. So, meanwhile, I, I'm gonna kind of cover this in kind of a big burst because I think this is just, this is kind of the her plot for this episode. So Avasrala is on her way back to Earth, and she finds out one of her undersecretaries, a lady by the name of Nancy Gao, is running against her um, in the upcoming election. So kind of shows parallels to our world, you know, people, election year. Anyway, um, basically her, her her idea is that because we have the ring gates, um, this could be used to alleviate the lar the very massive unemployment that's going on on Earth and Luna. By essentially putting people to work call, uh, as ship builders and engineers for the colony fleet, they're going to need to send out um, to settle these, settle and explore. So they're, they're saying, "Hey, this is great because this is going to cause an economic boom. We're going to see Earth, you know, rise again and be, you know, this great economic power because Earth is the, the cradle of humanity. It has the most, you know, infrastructure. So there's." There's a lot of history to it, so it's like, yeah, and e and even that was one of Nancy's arguments is we this is our 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 destiny. Like that's how I that's actually kind of how I feel about when people are like, oh, why do why do we want to go back into space? I'm like, fuck you, because that's our destiny, and we shouldn't have stopped going in the 1960s. We should have been we should have had a moon base in the 80s and been gearing up for Mars uh, when I was in high school. But that's beside the point. That's just me diatribing but I understand that very much like very angry but Christian is trying to be a lot more she's a lot more conservative on this because she's seen what happened she's been she she was at the table when the Eros incident was going on so she's like I don't want this to I don't want her she even tells her it's all great until our species goes extinct so basically it's it's the whole camp it, it, this episode is kind of her dealing with her campaign and so, that's kind of that's all I'm gonna say about Christian and her getting 
data from Holden. Um, we do find out one thing is that Nancy Gao had a uh, uh, had some help getting getting her getting her here because a lot of the people are on like a lotto system. So we find out that someone kind of helped her. One of the previous uh, secretaries of education was like, you know, she's pretty smart. So it turns out she uh, cheated, which will come. Which I'm sure, which I I know because I've watched all ten episodes. That comes up later, but anyway, so uh, we, we jump over to Mars. Uh, Bobby, uh, you know, kicks kicked uh, David's girlfriend's ass, and but she's kind of worried because uh, she didn't because he uh, because what she did, she basically destroyed all that all those all those drugs, man, the space Adderall. So. Um, What's her face? So she gets a call basically from David saying, Hey, I'm I got picked up after I got picked up after school by someone, um, I need some help. So shows up, runs into David's girlfriend, and she's like, Oh, you're you're so you're fucked. And this is when we meet David's boss, who we we learn his name is Esai. Now Esai, it turns out, is a cop. Uh, and we find this out when Bobby basically goes to report what the kidnapping, and he's the detective in charge of the kidnapping case. But basically, because of that, Isa is like, "Listen, you work for me. You do this job for me. David's debt is cleared. We'll leave him alone." And she's like, "Well, what do you want me to do?" And it's like, "Well, there's some technology that uh, during your what's it called." essentially decommissioning of these ships and stripping them down that people are willing to buy and it, you know since the arms running will basically pay off your debt so it, but it's not like they're running guns they said they're t they're tech running so Bobby basically told hey all you got to do is leave the door open to this one this one place it all gets taken care of and you know no harm no foul so it happens and we see that Bobby figures out you, she has like like, like basically a, a like a futuristic welder's mask and she figures out that one of the guys who's taking the stuff is a builder and a little a little spoilers ahead of time it's Naomi's son spoilers I'm sorry if you see but yeah um, I already know that but yeah so it turns out the Belters are getting a hold of Martian tech for nefarious means, which you will find out later on, but to, to say that just like the Soviet Union when it fell, there's a lot of the AK... It's very parallel... Very, it's much of a parallel to the fall of the Soviet Union. You have all those AKs and all those attack helicopters being sold to um, developing nations like... Um, Liberia, Uganda, and all that stuff, and to would be revolutionaries um, who end up being dictators. So there's that kind of very interesting parallel. The selling arm uh, stockpiles to poor nations. Hence why the, the AK is like the most famous uh, automatic rifle in the world. But uh, historical parallels aside, um, Bobby goes and confronts the east side. He's like, "Yeah, your, your your nephew's good. David's back home, which he is." He's like, "But I like your style. I really, I I want to make. Uh, I think you can make a lot of money, especially as a former." And he he basically almost kind of straight up says like like, just as uh, Chris is, "You're too good for what you're doing." Basically, hitting that like he he thinks it's bullshit. Like what happened there? So, Bobby's like. I'm good. Uh, meanwhile, back on Ellis, um, they're all investigating what happened. Um, there's a there's a tension between Murtry and Amos, par partly because Amos, following the lightning strike, was like, "Well, fuck, I need a, I need a generator to put, fix the Belters generator," and the RCE people are being assholes. So I'm just gonna go borrow one of their things, to which like he has like way. Uh, who was who's Richie's right hand and also um, bunk buddies? That's how we say or fuck buddies uh, with Amos. Um, it's like 
dude, you can't just do that. I, I, I gotta, we're given orders not to let people do this. What the fuck is like, so we're not banging anymore? I say, no, no, just, I'll smooth it over with Mertry. And, like, and what's great is after this, <coughs> there's a great, this great confrontation. Like, not even like fists and guns or anything, but like just straight up, uh, stare down between Amos and Mertry. Um, they, both end up in the <clears throat> in the saloon. Like like swaggers up to the table. Was like, hey, you know, what's up? and Mercury's kind of him the smirk. You know, oh yeah, you, like you think you're, you're bad bad shit. And he's like, and Amos like, I know you're a killer. Like I know you you get a certain amount of thrill out of this. And it was kind of fun. Is I was watching the. Um, because each of the episodes has a after show thing and what's interesting is Bern Grossman who does who does um Mertry who plays Mertry um he talks about how um that he thinks that that because uh what's his face uh, Mertry's seen so much shit that essentially watching people die is one of the only ways he actually gets you know he feels anything like he's it was like I'm numb to the world type thing. That's the only thing that actually kind of stimulates me, which is kind of an interesting way. But I do like what's pointed out is that this student has the right to be pissed, has the right to be suspicious of all these belters because he lost what he thought was alien tech destroying him turns out to be simple human anger and factionalism. That, uh, frankly, he's like, listen, I just came here to do a job. Which I actually, personally, I like better because in the book, he's a lot more of a, must kind of a message. I'm here for the money type thing. In this one, you, 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 you understand, he's, I like him because he's a lot more pragmatic. He's all, he's, A, he's pragmatic, and he's also, you know, you understand he's got a justification for hating those belters. So anyway, so he's spying on actually during this he's also spying on the belters uh, but you know because he thinks it's going on and Amos again as I said probably corrupts him and says hey you want to you want to throw down let's throw down now a little, little, little tease but um, you know he's still suspicious of, uh, everyone's it's, it's Amos is watching Mertry who's watching the belters specifically Lu also Lucia and one of the other guys got now. Now Lucia, I pretty think I told you last in the last thing. But if not, uh, she was. Uh, she's Katoa's mom in the in the, in the books. So her, this, yeah, uh, we get to see her um, when 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 Naomi and Amos are trying to fix the the generator. She's like, oh, I, I want to go out and sp this would be so awesome. I want to go learn, you know, like cause she's a smart kid and. This is very much like I have seen this. I've known people like this. Uh, when people you're moving, like 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 this is an uncommon. I've heard this from some like people who are immigrants to the U.S. There is a need for the family to basically stay together, and any kind of pushing out of that thing, push, reaching, which is sad. It, it does sometimes accidentally create lobsters in a bucket. That people be in a need to maintain a semblance of familiarity end up stagnating their and then they holding back their own family because there's very human need to, to have something to connect with it's very I, I understand that I, I've, I've known a friend I had a friend I it felt like something similar um, but I've known I, I can totally get that um, but uh so we, we get the feeling that from conversations with Lucia and one of the other belters that she was involved in the damaging of the, of the landing pad which also damaged the, the heavy shuttle so we um um they're, they're dealing with that and meanwhile Amos to an Amos things and keeping in contact with Holden who um him and him, Alex and um, LV, so Dr. Koye are doing. They're 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 trying to figure out what happened after the lightning strike. <coughs> so 
they go, they go, they're, they're, they're kind of wandering around, and, and they feel kind of like an earthquake thing, and like, hey, this should happen. So, so Fias is like, Fias, who's now up in orbit, is like, hey, um, we got some seismometers, uh, place those because this shouldn't be happening because, um, Illus is supposed to be a tectonically dead world, and a little thing is we later on we find out is the builders kind of did it on purpose. They kind of locked. They have they have some crazy fucking powers. I mean the tech is just nuts. But it turns out that um, and this was ex this actually was referenced in the book. There's this giant zamboni machine, which are these like coat things that look like little thorns coming out of the ground that spin around and they and it turns up the soil. And I think the idea was that is because they they have tectonic they froze in the tectonic plates. The idea was like we need to renew the soil. So it's kind of like tilling the soil, but the problem was is this thorn thing was gonna clips uh, first landing. So they're like, holds like, blow, blow it up because we can't, I can't contact Miller because he he's kind of not sure if Miller is really if, what he why is he doing these things like like he should have told me ahead of time this would set off lightning that would damage that would strike near first landing. <clears throat> so. Um, you know, they're trying to figure this out. Um, Murtry is very suspicious. Again, as he was, he, he, we get to him, he's very, still very suspicious of the Belters. Um, this is actually this point we find out, and it's been hinted through the episode, that Naomi is not taking one of the gravity. We already saw it in episode two, but she's trying to adjust, but it's not working. And at this point, uh, when she finds Lucia talking with Mercury because he's you know he, he knows that she was somehow involved in some way with the attack on the shuttle but because she's actually like not been confrontational she actually I mean she she helped fix his damaged leg he he's saying hey basically kind of giving her a dropping clue saying let your friends know back the fuck off uh, but that's when Naomi shows up and she's she gives her a little sp speech about how it, how basically it's ironic that, that they want help that the RCE people have, want help they're not offering help the belt uh, and the belts basically cut, c kind of been forced to play victim because Mercury's like oh you guys are just playing victims like we got a reason to do man and it ends up you know she ends up having basically almost a mini heart attack and at that point uh, Lucia's like you you have to get off you can't be on illness anymore your body's not adjusting I mean yeah your muscle and your bone density is great but your cardio because even even Alex was saying that straight up like you're, you're and she was trying to do the very oh I, I can handle it and she's like no you don't get it you're pushing yourself too hard if you don't do, if you don't go up the well, as they point out, if you don't go back into space, you're gonna die. Because Naomi, I th think, for most of her life, at most, has spent it at one third G. So, like, she, like, we saw what happened to Martians in season two when they go to Earth. Even with, you know, the Marines and the Navy all practicing at basically always flying at one G. Um. Uh, or, or near 1G uh, so they could invade Earth um, we, we saw how that how it doesn't always work especially like with someone like Naomi who, who is used to being on something like Ceres or Tycho which is one third G how you know how uh, um, but you know as I said the as Poland pointed out in episode one it takes them years to adjust to high gravity. Martians take years. But, so we see that she, so, but, the episode ends, because this is kind of, after Holden shoots off the missile, and he, he realizes that this Zamboni machine is going to clip first landing. Um, Mercury is like, all right, well, uh, I'm going to knock, nip this in the butt, this, this insurrection. And he, Goes and kills the other planners of the uh, the bombing. Who, we, who uh, how does he how does he know? Uh, they're gonna, well, they're all kind of in the same room talking about you know, offing Mercury. They're they're themselves planning. So it's very Game of Thrones. You know, no one's 
And then the episode earlier, the Mercy capping, I think his name was Scotty, and the head, boom. And I guess it was a really good episode. I, I, I thought it was kind of cool as we got to uh, was point out there's a lot of, like, little, especially on Mars, there's a lot of little details to the world. Like, um, when they were on the train, it was, I thought it was kind of cool. They had they had a little, like, ads, like uh, especially for Mars. Like, like, stronger together, terraforming stuff, or, um, you know... Enjoy the military type thing, but and I thought it was or basically do your part type thing. Very, very much like, uh, like I figured her name is like the girl who would do this, like the like the uh, rivet. I can't remember her name, but but you know who I'm talking about. The it has been memed to death. The world worked the straw like together, like this. Uh, so that I thought was kind of cool. That little touches that 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 that, that you forget. That that really, you don't quite get in the book, and I thought it was kind of dope seeing all that stuff. Um, I was kind of glad that, as I as I said in the book, um, we're told straight out uh, what happened. Like the whole like the reason why Murtry is pissed at the Belters is very obvious because he quickly in the book figures out that it was a bombing. But in the, uh, but he's not quite sure who, so. It, I thought this was much better. Like he's suspicious. I like, I like, and, and for that, it's a mystery for us and him. For those who are watching, you're like, "How's this gonna end?" Holy shit! Like, like it's not, it's broadcasting, but not, but it's not obvious because because I went through and watched the episodes again. And I'm like, "Oh shit!" I I missed that part. I mean, I just I just recently I just before this video I rewatched. Episode three, just to make sure I was getting all the parts. And I'm like, yeah, there's these little details. Which I'm like, holy shit. Um, like, like, and what's fun is, as I said, as someone who's read all the way up to the to eighth book, they're, they're, I can't wait. Come on, just say, James, please get book nine out. I want, I want to listen to it on on Audible, please. And Audible, please. Excuse me, but. Yeah, like to see that, like, like, like especially the the, the proto molecule style thing, you know, like the essentially not the the nucleus thing, a full on like what they're structured. I'm really jazzed because in the later seasons we are, especially, I think they're gonna hint. I think they're gonna sh they might even show it in season five because it would play into the story. But uh, we're gonna see a lot. In the, in the later books, we do see a lot more um, builder tech um, um, because, like, 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 of course, because I mean, you already found structures on one world. I mean, there's going to be things other worlds like I don't know, maybe a shipyard, maybe. Anyway, but but I thought it was kind of cool that. We got to see our first glimpse, and I can't wait to see how they expand the, the tech and how it's going to look. I mean, it's going to be freaking amazing. So, thank you guys for watching. Remember, um, if you like this video, if you want to see more, help, give give me a leave a comment. How what did you think about this episode? Um, anyway, my name is Dan from Random Media Guys. Uh, I'll see you guys for next episode, and peace. The Yun Earther, Martian, or Belt Boltaloda.